what's going on? It's Breacher, and you want to play a sub rogue, do you? Well, you should. You should. It is the number one right now. Rogue spec to be taking for raiding. It's the number one. It's up there. Yes, indeed. It is the one that you should be trying to get a hold of and get a grip of and get playing correctly. However, that doesn't mean it's always going to be perfect. There are some fights that definitely lean themselves towards combat, so you should always have that on backup. But in general, you want to be rocking the sub rogue. Also, the sub rogue is the one people try and avoid. Yes, indeed, as much as people cried out for more variety of specs in Mr. Pandaria, now sub is at the forefront. People are like, oh, I want to play Assassination, I want to play Combat. For the simple fact is, they tend to be easier. Yes, they do. Sub requires a little bit more thinking. And like its spell namesake, requires a little bit more preparation. Yes, it does indeed. So don't worry, I'm going to talk you through it today. Talk about our stats and stuff and basic talents overview, but more importantly, how we play it. It is going to take a little bit longer because this thing is not something you can just kind of jot down with a simple priority system. Things change, they swap about. There's a different mindset during different parts of encounters. And hopefully I'll get you through that today so you can start kicking ass on your sub rogue and start seeing some big ranks on that bad boy. All right, let's go with the basic talent stuff. Shadow focus, generally the go-to. There is some argument for some subterfuge we're going to be opening with ambushes and we're going to be doing a lot of ambushes throughout the fight and some vanishes and some preparation vanishes and all that kind of stuff therefore you want to make sure you're good and making good use of that i like shadow focus overall why? Because we're going to be doing a lot of energy pooling. It's very important that when we go into our what is our fundamental idea of shadow of shadow uh, of sub what is our fundamental idea every spec every dps spec in the game has a fundamental idea that if you get that right everything else kind of falls into place with the sub rogue it is the shadow dance we go every one minute the spec will call upon you to enter the shadow dance you must go into the shadow dance prepared ready and ready to do battle and when we do that everything will work out nicely everything else will just fall into place so when we go into our Shadow Dance, we're going to be getting energy pooling. We're going to be getting our combo points ready. Shadow Focus allows us to make sure that everything we do works out nicely and our energy is nice and ready as we want it to be. At level 30, it doesn't really matter. Pick whatever the hell you feel like. Some people had some controversy on the combat rogue. Like, I found this helpful. I found this helpful. Whatever. It doesn't really matter. In raiding, I find Nerve Strike to be the best when it can be used. It can't always be used, but it seems more useful than the others. At level 45, you're going to take Cheat Death or Elusiveness. This really depends on how you play. Some people are susceptible to dying. Let's face facts, guys. Some people do. And if you're likely to die on progress because you get a bit panicky or whatever, cheat death can, in fact, save your life. Simple as that. And if you're dead, you're doing way less damage than if you're alive. It's actually a pretty easy graph to follow. I personally prefer elusiveness. I like to be in control of the damage I take. I tend not to be panicked even in those closing seconds of the fight, and therefore elusiveness allows me to protect myself and control my damage intake nicely leeching poison pretty garbage never found a point where it was useful yet so there you go at level 60 shadow step is your only choice burst of speed is awesome but also costs a shitload of energy which could be used towards damage and we are a rogue we are there to kill the boss it's as simple as that that is why we are there we are brought to do as much damage as humanly possible it is no good to be thinking yeah but look uh, i didn't take anyone as much damage blah 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 we walk a fine line as a rogue yeah, we're going to take damage, but we also need that boss to die as fast as humanly possible. Therefore, Shadow Step is your only choice. Level 75, Internal Bleeding or Prey of the Week. Prey on the Week. Prey on the Week is something I had a good discussion on in the last video. And people were kind of like, yeah, I see that. And other guilds are like, no, I can do that. Simply put, if you can guarantee you're going to be the guy doing the stuns, think about things like Kargath Blade Fist while you're up on the platforms. Are you the guy who's going to be stunning those important mobs? Not getting diminishing returns on stuns. If you are, Prey on the Week is absolutely crucial absolutely crucial if you cannot guarantee that internal bleeding is a huge self dps increase yeah that bleed is kick fucking ass it's really good really really good if you're going to drop a kidney shot and it's not going to last its full duration you will still get the full duration bleed which is very very cool so choose wisely depending on how your guild does things a level 90 anticipation a lot of people are like oh, mark for death is on the on the paper simulation it says it's the slightly better listen when you come to my guides i tell you what works in practice in practice anticipation is your only choice it really is it allows you to get better openers it allows you to do things through the fight that you cannot ordinarily do it allows you to cope with situations that get a little bit tricky mark for death on paper might give you some slight dps increase if you use it correctly however anticipation always works always works and will never let you down. 
and therefore I prefer it every single time and I recommend it to you guys. At level 100, we have only one choice, and it's Shadow Reflection. Now, that doesn't mean that we keybind it. Please, for the love of God, do not macro this to Shadow Dance. Do not do that. That's a fuck up. That's a brown nose. Don't do it. You're screwing yourself over. If you're, key by, if you're macroing this to Shadow Reflection, you're fucking yourself. Simple as that. You're fucking yourself if you're doing that. And I'll show you why soon. In terms of your glyphs, two mandatory glyphs. Your glyph of hemorrhaging veins, okay? You want to take this mandatory and the glyph of energy. That allows us to get better openers. It allows us to pool more energy, which we just talked about. These two are mandatory. Your third glyph, take whatever the hell you fucking please. It doesn't matter. And in your, th in your tertiary glyphs, who gives a shit? Do whatever you want. I don't care. It doesn't matter. It won't help you in any single way, what shape or form. There is some argument, and I tend to take the glyph of sprint. Glyph of Sprint over Deadly Momentum, and that is because if we sprint, that's because we're not in melee range. If we're sprinting, it's because we're not attacking, and we want to get there faster. So Glyph of Sprint is generally my go-to for my third glyph when we're in a raid. I have not been raiding today, hence I have the Glyph of Deadly Momentum. Simple as that. Okay, how do we play this motherfucker? How do we play it? Let's do the super basics for people who want to understand. Your opener, you're going to start in stealth. This is one of the things that's really going to start to piss people off in raids. You have to get your healers to heal way before you pull. And that is because of Honor Among Thieves. Honor Among Thieves. You want heals to crit. Hots are the best. You want things like Renewing Mist. You want Renew. You want fucking Rejuve. You want all these things ticking on people so you start gaining combo points. You want to start every single raid boss with 10 combo points in the bag. Moan at your healers. They will hate you for it. It's okay. It's all right. We'll live with it because having 10 combo points over zero is obviously way, way better for us. So hopefully you're using a countdown in your pulls. I would hope that is happening. So we're going to be in stealth. We're going to be chilling. And we're going to see that countdown coming. It's going to be seven. It's going to be six. It's going to be five. Around about four, you're going to pop a slice and dice. That's right. You've got 10 combo points banked up. At four, you're going to pop a slice and dice. That's going to give you a full duration slice and dice. And also allow you to generate another ten com uh, full 10 combo points by the time we go into our fight. So four seconds left. Slice and dice. Getting down to two, one. Pop a potion. Yeah, we're going to open with a potion because we're about to kick ass. Now, this is the standard basic opener. I'm going to do it for you right here. This is our training this is our boss so we're going to be shadow stepping in we're going to ambush then we're going to pop shadow reflection then you should have five combo points you're going to go and pop a rejuve uh rejuve <laughs> a rupture and that gives you a shadow reflection rupture you should have slice and dice on from the pull pop a hemorrhage on now what we're tracking is actually exposed weakness okay so i'm going to start again so you can see that i want you to get the grips of that please it's shadow step ambush shadow reflection rupture your slice and dice should already be ticking because we popped it at the four second countdown yeah very very simple idea so seven six five four slice and dice three two one in ambush now track expose weakness in some fashion okay this is the exposed weakness i have a tell me when telling me you can track it in any normal way when it gets to about two seconds then we go into our shadow dance we start shadow dancing now depending on your multi-strike your ruptures can wear off very quickly okay because of how our talent system works but while we're in shadow dance we don't care about things like hemorrhage okay while we're shadow dancing when hem when uh, shadow dance is finished feel free to put it on when it's about two seconds left vanish ambush expose weakness again we can get a full 40 seconds of this but during this time use preparation that resets our vanish keep that rupture ticking two one vanish ambush and keep that expose weakness ticking okay keep that expose weakness ticking that's your general opener your general opener is going to be get in there get your first ambush on get your dots rolling all that kind of stuff make sure you're using five combo point slice and dice five combo point rupture yeah nice and easy put your hemorrhage on don't refresh hemorrhage until it's actually wore off hemorrhage is kind of being dropped by a lot of players that is a dps decrease but the best way to use it is don't use it while you're in shadow dance forget forget hemorrhage while you're in shadow dance when it's worn off don't refresh it while it's still ticking then stick a hemorrhage up and don't worry about it okay if you have things like uh, fine weakness on and you have things like shadow dance going on forget hemorrhage use it in your downtime period simple as that other than that five combo points uh rupture five combo points slice and dice and this is our normal go-to phase nice and easy very simple now i was talking about preparation earlier so i'm going to pop shadow dance here our preparation phase is getting ready to do the next shadow dance what did i say the fundamental aspect of sub is making sure we do lovely lovely shadow dances very very easy so what how do i do this simply put i have a 15 second warning of when my shadow dance will come off cooldown 15 seconds 15 seconds is enough time to make sure that we're going into shadow dance yeah we're going into shadow dance with as much energy 
as many combo points and with our rupture and slice and dice ticking as much as possible that means a full duration if possible okay so during this time nice and slow you've got to remember how honor among thieves works guys okay honor among thieves means you're going to be gaining combo points whether you use that energy or not okay you don't want to cap energy that's a waste so here we go 15 seconds so i've got 15 seconds here so what i'm doing now is i'm watching my energy my slice and dice is going to wear off stick that hemorrhage up and six seconds left so i'm going to refresh slice and dice now three seconds left now i'm chilling i'm chilling i'm chilling i'm chilling i'm chilling and rupture on full energy into the shadow dance yeah we got a full duration slice and dice we got a full duration uh, rupture ticking look how quickly this wears off with good multi-strike oh my god it's so good and we're going straight into it simple as that that's a great shadow dance as many ambushes and eviscerates as possible during your shadow dance it's crucially important that you get your last ability during shadow dance is an ambush give you the longest fine weakness ever okay that's your standard pull that's how it's going to work not all the time though <laughs> not all the time i told you this thing would take a little bit of explaining bloodlust bloodlust is a thing bloodlust can be used sometimes at the beginning of a fight now a lot of websites and stuff will tell you that oh the best thing you can ever do for your sub rogue is make sure you have fine weakness up as long as possible that's going to give you the best results and all the time it depends if we're going straight into a bloodlusted pull it's better to go straight into your shadow dance with your shadow reflection up while you've got all this extra energy resources and all that kind of stuff you'll see better results believe me i've tested this it's better to go absolutely hamburgers on this thing okay so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to use iron among thieves by auto attacking to generate some 10 combo points so i can show you like a bloodlusted opening because this is important guys you need to be able to do this so let's get 10, uh, 10 combo points go 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 I need 10 combo points and 5 energy. There we go. Uh, full energy. So, this is how we'll start a fight. Let me vanish so we're out of combat. I'm in stealth. So, we've got these 10 combo points. Seven, this is your bloodlusted one. It's 7, 6, 5, 4. Slice and dice. 3, 2, 1. Shadow step. Shadow reflection. Rupture. Shadow dance. Straight into the fucking shadow dance, okay? Straight in there. And you should have a potion and shit on. Notice how I'm not bothering with hemorrhage. Don't give a shit about hemorrhage while my fine weakness is up. And I'm going absolutely ham on this motherfucker. And that will give you ludicrous burst, people. Absolutely crazy burst. And when fine weakness wears off, I obviously can't vanish our prep at the moment. And then we can stick a hemorrhage up. And then you go into relaxed phase, okay? Relaxed phase. Just let it come. And we're waiting for the next shadow dance. As simple as that. Nice and chill. Remember, these combo points will come whether you want them to or not. Some people panic about pooling energy and, oh, my rupture's about to wear off. The combo points will still keep coming whether you're backstabbing or not. Just don't cap your energy. As simple as that. There we go. Chilling. Chilling. And eviscerate will do nicely. Chilling. Always keeping my energy about 50. Yeah, keeping my energy about 50. I have no fine weakness up. I'm not buffed by any means right now. I've got no trinkets going. Eight seconds. Eight seconds. Use another backstab there. About to cap energy. Three seconds. And I've got a pop of slice and dice there. And go. 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 Really nice. Really nice. Okay, watch your anticipation. Make sure you don't overcap your combo points. But I want my last ability to be that ambush so I get that last fine weakness up. Okay, refresh the rupture. You can refresh it below eight seconds, guys. If you've got good multi strike, what you'll have to be aware of is because of. Uh, sinister calling when you multi-strike with your backstab or ambush it's going to twist the blade causing all your bleed effects to advance by two seconds triggering an instant tick which means once you get heavy multi-strike when you start gemming properly for multi-strike which you should be enchanting for multi-strike gemming for multi-strike wherever possible it's really important that you have a good warning of when your rupture will wear off if you have it at like three seconds or something it'll just disappear before you know it and it's absolutely very very annoying so those are the two pulls you can do. Bloodlusted pull and an ordinary pull if you're going to be bloodlusting later in the fight. What about AoE? AoE is pretty crazy because we have enhanced fan of knives. Uh, let me get dump these. Let me just dump these on slice and dice. So our new AoE means that every target we hit with five knives, ka-ching, we get combo points for it. So how does this work? Well, you'll be tempted to just throw Crimson Tempest. But if you're up to like five or six mobs and they're going to live, you want to be putting the Crimson Tempest bleed up yeah and you're going to be running around fan of knivesing and putting five combo ruptures and when you're down to a few mobs then you can start spamming some fan uh, some crimson tempest real easy guys our aoe is scales exceptionally well exceptionally well if you get more than six mobs like you know you start getting those little packs of like 10 mobs or whatever then you're just going to be spamming crimson tempest all day every day but other than that you're running around using fan of knives generate five combo points each time run around slice and dice on and get all those ruptures ticking away and that's going to give you absolutely exceptional aoe real easy if you're with two mobs if it's just two mobs like twin ogron 
as soon as you get one extra mob, guys, because of the way enhanced uh, Fan of Knives works, as soon as you get two mobs, it's worth starting using Fan of Knives over Backstab. Yeah, for real. Just two mobs, it's worth doing that. You're going to keep a rupture on both targets and then continue normally with single target. Don't bother with Hemorrhage. It's a fucking waste of time. Uh, you might as well use a Fan of Knives. And you're just going to be spamming like Fan of Knives, Eviscerate. Fan of Knives, Eviscerate. Fan of Knives, Eviscerate. And you're going to be doing this over and over and over and over again. It's pretty dull. Don't get me wrong, uh, it's but compared to combat, which you just do the single thing, fan of knives, rupture, fan of knives, rupture, fan of knives, eviscerate. Simple as that. Go away, I don't want to talk to you. And that is how our cleave works. It's very much as simple as that. As soon as you have one extra mob, start dropping those fan of knives, guys. Start fan of knives away. Forget your backstab. doesn't exist. Because of that, our stat priorities. Because of that fact, and the, that's the way it works. Multi-strike would obviously seem to be the best because of Sinister Calling. However, Mastery is pretty equal to that. Mastery is very much equal. Basically, the way WAD gearing works is I'll tell you your best stats and your worst stat. Try and avoid your worst stat as much as possible, and that is Haste. Haste is our absolute worst stat. Why? Because of Honor Among Thieves. Our combo points will keep coming. We don't need to be spamming things like backstab all the time to get our combo points regular. It'll happen naturally. Doesn't matter, okay? So our haste is our haste is our worst stat. Now, crit and versatility, uh, while they're not the best by any means, they're not uber terrible. So don't be worried about getting things like versatility multi-strike. That means you've got one really good stat on there. If you see a haste versatility neck, you're going to cry your eyes out. It's pretty garbage, but what are you going to do? Uh, mastery multi-strike, like this pair of shoulders, is absolutely delicious, as you can see. Two best stats plus a gem slot. Oosh! Want that in and around my face all day, every day. Versatility multi-strike cloak, very, very cool. What you're trying to get rid of is your haste. If you're raiding high mall then that's very difficult. Everything has haste on it for some goddamn fucking reason. There's not much choice in our gear, but hell, we've only got seven bosses to go at, so there's not going to be too much variety. What I will say, if you're not raiding, there's a little side note, guys, if you're not raiding, then the world bosses drop tremendous gear for sub rogues. Absolutely tremendous gear. So if you're looking to make an impression on a trial, and you've not been raiding heroic or anything like that, go and get your world boss gear. Coin the motherfucker, because it's so good. Really nice gear coming from there. Other than that, hi, Maul. Just get whatever you can get, guys. Get whatever you can get. Even our fucking daggers have haste on. I don't know. Blizzard. <laughs> whatever. Blizzard told us we need it. That's how it's going to work. Now, that was a lot of information to take in. I appreciate that. So, I'm going to jump in a five band now. I'm going to show you exactly how all that comes together. And we'll talk through the process as we do it. All right, guys. Thank you very much. It's Preacher. See you later. Bye-bye.